Hi, I'm Anton from Anton's Mindstorms Hacks. In this video, I'm going to show you how to program this awesome lizard. I, um, I built it from um, a Mindstorm set and this uh, harvesting machine, just these two boxes. I remixed them into this um, lizard and I also built this little pedestal or this little stand with it. And today we're going to use the stand to, to program it. And we also have some, uh, a little audience there in the back here. They're going to watch us programming. The first thing we um, want to do is uh, reset the body. And even before that, we of course have to make a new program. There we go. No program, we're uh, connected to the brick and let's reset the program, the body here because um, as you can see the, the legs are not perpendicular to the body and we want to make sure they are before we start walking. To reset the body we're going to make the medium motor uh, run as you can see, my medium motor is in port D. Uh, so let's make this port D and we're going to make it run at 70% of the voltage. So this is an unregulated motor block. It just sets the voltage on the motor and doesn't do any smart things with it, which is exactly what we want to find uh, the limits of the body motion. And to find the limits, we're just going to make it run at 70% of the voltage then we're going to wait a little bit until it gets up to speed. Three seconds is too long, we need 0.3 seconds. And when it's sped up, we're going to wait again. Um, but this time we're going to look at the motor speed. So in um, the Mindstorms program, motor speed is somehow called current power, which is really weird, but it's it's speed and it's speed in a percentage of the maximum speed more or less so what we're going to do is we're going to wait until the actual speed drops below two percent of the maximum speed so it's another wave lock we of course have to look at the motor in port d at that point we will um yeah we will just Turn the motor off, so let's set the voltage to zero. Okay, let's run the program so you can see how the legs move to one extreme and then the lizard stops. So this is one extreme, then we will run the motor uh, in reverse until we are back in the middle and reset the position there. Set the power to 70. I guess as I, I think it's about 200 degrees or minus 200 to run it back to the middle. Uh, let's see how that works. It's not yet in the middle. Maybe it was minus 300 degrees to get it back to the middle. Yeah, right now it's more or less parallel. So what we did in this program, we just turn on the voltage, wait a little until the motor gets up to speed and then wait some more until the speed drops again because it's reaching uh, a limit. Turn off the voltage and then um, since we reached one of the end of the limit, I wanted the motor to turn back to the center. And then reset the motor position. This is going to make a, for a nice my block. So we're going to make this into this my block and it's going to be called body reset. Isn't that a nice name? Okay, click here to clean up the program a little bit. The next thing we're going to do is move the legs. 
and we want to move the legs synchronized with each other so that uh, if one leg moves forward the other legs moves backwards in the same uh, position so this is a time synchronized function and we we're going to do that in, in a loop. So in a loop, we're going to continuously update motor positions according to the time in this timer block. So what we want is that um, the motor position is a multiple of the time. Because if we would put time, so well, let's start here. Um, you could put the time into the motor degrees but then after one second it would turn one degree after two seconds it would turn two degrees so after two seconds it would have turned three degrees but we want the motor to be at the time in second so the way we're doing this is um, we're actually looking at the position where the motor is, subtracting this from the position where we want the motor to be. This gives us the error. And we're going to um, multiply that error by a certain number. It, it's the feedback factor in um, in control in systems control in uh, mechatronics there is only negative feedback so we are going to feed back the error in a negative way to the motor power so in this way the um, the voltage of the motor is high if the error is large and low if we're already um, close to the target and it goes negative if we overshoot the target that's what this does it looks at the target we need and adjusts the motor voltage accordingly so um, uh, let's see what this simple program does so again we reset and then you can see the front leg is turning really really slowly why is that because it's turning at one degree per second. So because we use the seconds as input for the motor position, that's too slow for even very slow lizards. So let's speed this up. What we really want is to have the motor run at um, 100 degrees per second. So let's take the timer as an input here multiply it by 100 and use that as the position and feed that into the control loop Let's see what this does awesome so right now we have um, the motor position here and uh, the motor is exactly at 100 times the second uh, the duration of this program what you also saw is that the motor started with a jolt that's because um, this timer started running at the start of the program program even while the body was resetting and then uh, it tried to match that time instantly when running this loop so what we're going to do is also reset the timer right before we go into the loop and we'll see that the jolt will be gone exactly what we needed cool um, i also see that uh, the motor is running backwards so we're going to make this negative 100 so whenever um, there are five seconds elapsed I want the motor to be at minus 500 degrees so that because this motor here is mounted backwards so that 
the net effect is um, the legs moving forwards like this. Good. So now we do the back legs. Um, for the back legs, we're going to also calculate the position um, and it's going to be dependent on the time. And we're also going to use this controller here to um, regulate the position of the motor um, relative to the desired position. And um, it's a good principle in programming. It's called DRY or D-R-Y. Uh, do not repeat yourself. Since we are going to use this exact principle again, I might just as well make it into a my block and this way I won't be repeating myself and copy pasting this. So let's put this into a my block and let's call it um, proportional controller or P controller sometimes. Um, it's going to be something with motors. As an input, we want the position in degrees. What is a nice position in degrees? Okay, that's going to be our input. And um, since we're going to make this general, we're going to use it on just any motor. We're also going to take the motor port as an input. So let's call this one position and let's call that one port. So they're both inputs, they're both numbers. And okay, finish building this. Um, as you know, you can wire ports into blocks. So let's put the port into wired mode, connect the port parameter. Okay, we can close this now and go back to our main program. Click this to clean it up and port B is port 2. So let's see if uh, the program still works after making the my block. Yes, it still works. So we made the my block right. The next thing to do is do exactly the same for the back legs. So we're going to copy this. Put it there. We also need time as an input. And the back legs are in port C, which is three for a port. Let's see what this does. Now the back legs move backwards. So here we need to change the minus 100 to plus 100 to make this turn right, okay? Try again. This is more or less the result we want, except that the lizard is not really walking. For that, it's important that the legs are in sync, so they should start in a walking position. Now you can fix this by making sure that when you start it, say this one is up and this one is down, so they are exactly 180 degrees um, apart. You can start it now. And now you see there is a, a walking motion coming up. Now, um, since I always forget which leg to put up and which leg to put down, I prefer to make the program so that I can start it with both legs on the right side up. And then um, I can change it into the program. I can say, um, make this one advanced math here. So um, 
a times b so we're back at our multiplication but i'm also going to give this one this leg an offset of 180 so the back legs should also always be 180 degrees farther than the front legs um, and now i can start with both legs both red bits pointed up and run it and you will see the first thing it will do is run to its desired position and right away the legs will be in sync it's just a way for me to remember where to start so now we have um, moving legs but we still want a twisting body um, the twisting body um, so it, we get a motion that goes back and forth and uh, there is a mathematical function that does that uh, which we're going to use here and it's called a sine function so the sine function generates a wave back and forth um, between uh, minus one and plus one so what we're going to do here is use an advanced math block um, connect it of course advanced we don't need this connection anymore yeah that's better uh, and okay let's input the time and let's make a sine wave based on the time so this function generates a sine wave that goes from 0 to 1 to minus 1 um, in uh, it's in degrees the sign so it will take 360 seconds so it will take about um, six minutes to execute a full wave which is way slower than we really wanted so we're going to multiply this by um, the speed um, say oh, let's use the same speed I'm going to input the speed here in B so that's easy to see so we have here 100 100 100 it'll be easier to manage and it will be even easier if we make it all 100 so what I can do here is um, multiply this one by minus B and then I can input 100 here and then so the speed will be easier to parameterize later on so right now we have um, a sine wave that goes from 0 to 1 to minus 1 at the exact same speed at the exact same cycle time as the legs um, and much like the legs we're going to input this into um, the controller so this is our proportional controller um, our body motor is in port 4 and this is going to be our target so now this y wave this sine wave generates a number between minus 1 and plus 1 and just turning one degree up and down is going to be very spectacular um, going turning minus 200 and plus 200 degrees is going to be more spectacular so i'm going to multiply this by c which is going to be the amplitude of the wave and let's input the number 200 here and see what happens if we really managed to make the body twist according to the sine wave awesome as you can see now the both of the legs move uh, forward in sync that's because i didn't start the program with the red things pointing up so let's try that again this time we're going to make sure that both red bits are up and try it again okay now there is another problem when the legs 
go backward, the body twists in the wrong direction. So we have to change the twist here. Okay. So let's twist it exactly the opposite way by changing this number to minus 200. Put the legs up again. And voila, we have the lizard walking motion like a real lizard with twisting body and moving legs. Now it would be really nice if we can also speed up the lizard. And we could do that uh, maybe with the buttons on top there. So what we want to do now, oh, I'm gonna save my project here for a bit. Um, is wait for a button to be pressed, say the up button and then make it go faster. So here we select the up button, make this flat so it's easier to see the program, connect the whole thing to get some overview. Let's drag this into view. Okay, so what are we going to do once the up button, let's put it to pressed, so it's pressed and released again. Um, we want to update the speed. So here the speed is 100, 100 degrees per second for the front leg and for the period of the sine wave. Um, we want to increase that number. So let's first start by putting this into a variable. Um, let's make a new one, we'll call it speed and write 100 into that. And then here during the loop all the time, we're going to read the speed here and we can just connect it into whichever port or bay where we put 100 and now speed is parameterized as a number 100 so oh yeah we could also like to see whether this work start the program with 150 speed and see if it really runs faster than uh, that's already much faster now we want to control the speed um, variable by the up and down buttons. Let's start with the up button. So in the case of the up button, we want to read the speed and um, increase it by say 10. And then write it back. read numeric speed add 10 to it and put it back into the speed uh, thing now this will lead to problems um, i'm just going to run the program so you can see what the problem is As you can see now, whenever I press the up button, not only the speed increase, but the lizard also jerks. That's um, because we are controlling the motor positions relative to time. And um, after a certain time is expired, a certain amount of degrees uh, are achieved. But if we increase the speed without um, saving our current position and um, adjusting uh, the position for the new speed constant, we get this jerk. So um, for this, 
We're also going to um, make a, um, a variable called time offset. So whenever we increase the speed, we can reset the timer and calculate a time offset um, as if we have been running at the new faster updated speed all the time. And this will um, avoid the jerking motion. Um, okay, so for this, we are going to uh, disconnect the time here. Oh yeah, let's wait with disconnecting one. First, what we want to do is read the offset, time offset, read it. Oh, we can, we had better move these things to a new line. My program is becoming a little bit of a mess here. Okay, we're back on track, more or less. Um, okay, what we were doing, we were reading the time offset. We are going to add that to the time. So we have a time with a time offset that we can use as an input for all our calculations instead of this one. Okay, oh, the wires are a bit of a mess. We are going to disconnect the time everywhere. I put them into A of every advanced calculation. Um, speed has become a bit of a mess too. Speed was in B everywhere. So now we have the time plus the offset and we're going to use that as an input. For the time everywhere. Cool. Um, that's a bit of a disadvantage of EV3G because of the wires. Sometimes uh, the programs become very confusing. So now we are not using pure time as an input for every um, positional calculation here, but we are using time plus an offset, which is zero when we start the program. But we will calculate it, recalculate it whenever um, we update the speed here. So what we want to do is when we recalculate the offset, we want to have a look at the current time and calculate how much it would have been or if we had been running at the new speed all the time. To do that, we go uh, like this. So let's put the speed into um, B, like we always do, speed is B. And let's put the time into A, whoopsie. Okay. So if A is the time and uh, we want to have a time, a new time, as if we had been running at a higher speed all the time, that means um, we divide it by the new speed, which is B plus 10, and multiply it by, by the old speed. And then we have our offset, we can write it back into offset. However, this will only work once because by the second time, oh yeah, and we can also reset our timer. But by the second time we press uh, this button, 
there will not only be the time but there will also be an offset so we have to also read the offset and take that into our calculation time offset read it and let's put it into C okay so we do not only want to scale the current time but the current time plus the current offset and put all of this back into the new time offset reset the timer okay let's see if we did it right this time let's try the button wow it works so every time I press this button, the lizard starts to go faster and faster and faster and faster. Okay, this uh, concludes my video for programming the lizard. Now you know how to speed up the lizard. You probably can figure out how to slow it down again. Uh, because the video is already quite long, I won't go in, be going into that. I hope you enjoyed it and learned a lot of... Um, advanced programming techniques for uh, robots um, be sure to subscribe to my videos over there or um, maybe you want to watch other videos over there uh, that could be interesting for you enjoy bye bye